Well, happy Saturday morning, everyone. We are glad you could join us here at Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we are here to help you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon, right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. We want to put you in the know when it comes to car stuff. If you've got car questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Road Map, did I pay too much to get my car fixed? Open phones, Good Guys Car Show. Can I, as a consumer, determine different grades of quality when it comes to auto repair? In counterfeit airbags. I think we talked about this last year, did we not? Back in the it, news? It, back in the news for sure, Dave. And, and uh, I don't know if someone's a little bit late to the punch. Like, you know, we, we, we talked about this last October with the airbags. So I don't know what the – I think the recent news was that it was determined through a federal prosecution that some of these airbags wound up in Arizona. Ah. So th- that's why it's coming up. But, you know – Got to be careful here. I get my backside a little bit chapped when I read some of these or hear some of the sounds by and read some of the statements about about the airbags. And uh, there's a lot of good shops, a lot of good body shops that do a great job fixing cars. iCar certified, you know, uh, there's various certification levels, ASE body technicians and stuff. Bumper to bumper shop, for that matter. Absolutely, we've got two great bumper to bumper body shops that you'll see, but. The ring thing that gets me fired up here is when Tom Horn, who has done a couple great things and eradicated some bad guys, that's great. But the implication that if you got your car fixed, your airbag fixed at some place other than a dealership, new car dealership, yeah, new car, that just grinds me. Yeah, it. it uh, the implication is that that only the new car dealership is capable of properly fixing your bodywork or installing the right airbag, and, and I would say that that uh, it just as well could happen at a dealership if you got a rogue employee. Right, you bet. Now that was just a mirror of what the National Transportation uh, Safety yeah, NHTSA <laughs> NHTSA. Okay, what what they said that you know your new car if you had your car repaired at a new car dealership this is not going to be a problem for you but it absolutely could be. And I think, you know, uh, the likelihood that it would happen at a dealership or a legitimate auto repair shop is very unlikely. I'm not buying my parts from eBay to fix my customers' cars, nor do I even look there. But that's where these guys would have to go to fix that. So I don't want to create a false sense of security because I went to the dealership. Now I'm safe. You know, dealerships are no different than a lot of good independent repair, you know. In a lot of ways, yes. In a lot of ways. More so, we have more control in the independent world, I do feel. You know, I'm, I'm watching right over everything that goes through on in my shop. Well, it's a much smaller scale. I mean, if, if I've got a baby, why do you think they limit daycare? <laughs> if I've got a babysit three kids, you know, you go, I don't know what the rules are in Arizona, but you have to have so many kids per teacher or whatever. You lose control. The bigger it gets. The bigger it gets, you lose, not control. You just don't have it all in your grasp. So what would stop a guy at a dealership from... I mean, and it could happen in the independent world as well. So I don't want to, you know, pick just on the paint, dealership, paint this right. glossy picture and make us shiny. But, but the the technician who's gone rogue goes, "Ooh, I got. We're going to put an airbag in this, uh, whatever it is, Acura or Chrysler, whatever, whatever model. Just pick one, make one up. We're going to put one in there. And I, you know what? I saw one of those on eBay for eighty bucks the other day. So mm. I'm going to buy it, and then I'm going to put that one in. I'll go sell the good one for four hundred. Oh, charge the yeah. charge the good one price, the four hundred dollar for the management doesn't price. know anything about this. This is just the guy gone wild in the back that's right. you know looking. You know, and then he goes and sells the real one. So we're not saying that that happens. Mm. My point is that the, you the, were creating the, a false sense of security by saying if you had a new car repair. And the big one that was pointed out was the salvage title car. This is where I do get concerned. If you have a car, you know, let's say you just bought a vehicle or you're looking to buy a vehicle and it has a salvage title. Not a lot of people look at their titles when they buy these cars, but if it's a salvage title, well, that didn't actually, that was a car that the insurance company already paid for full value to get it off the road. Well, they deemed that it wasn't worth fixing. It wasn't worth Financially, fixing. it just didn't make sense for them to fix that car or the car was so badly damaged. So what will happen is those will go to an auction and get sold as salvage or restored title or something like that. 
Well, typically they're supposed to just go to the salvage yard, recycling yard, and then get cut up in various parts. They're still the, very good on those cars, and right. fenders, and things that weren't damaged. But um, a lot of people restore them and put them back out on the road. Yeah. And they sell them with the salvage title. And that's one where I think you got to be concerned. Because if I'm doing a salvage title repair, maybe I'm an entrepreneurialistic uh, body guy and I'm doing this little repair on the side, you know, I may not know better. I may pick something up on eBay say, yeah, why not use this one? Airbags are very, very expensive. Or you may know better because common sense tells you that if airbag from the manufacturer is three or four hundred dollars an airbag off ebay is eighty dollars brand new in the box right come on man Use there's got to be a little bit there's got to be something different but but i have seen a lot of corners cut when i see salvage cars especially when we do pre-purchase inspections they bring it in and we're looking at it we're looking at it we we can see the damage that was done that was fixed i mean literally have seen this one you know guy that i knew that did salvage repairs you know he would go by the back half of a chevrolet suburban and go by the front half of a chevrolet suburban and literally weld the thing down the middle i mean it was impressive what he could do but do you feel safe is it going to get the good airbag when airbags go off you got side curtain airbags now you got airbags in the steering wheel now it's a big deal we put a video up on our Facebook page, Bumper to Bumper Radio Facebook, and take a minute and watch this video as far as these airbags. It's not just a matter of they're counterfeit. I mean, these are dangerous. Well, some of them just simply don't inflate, and then some of them look like someone's holding a 12-gauge shotgun <laughs> you know, down the steering column. You get a blast. I mean, it's scary. Right. So, But also that we put a, you know, the NHTSA, N-H-T-S-A, link on the Facebook page as well. And there is a list of, of cars that where they found that these airbags were being sold, and they appear to be mostly imports. There's a couple Ford and – there's a Ford model in there, but there's Acura, Audi, BMW, Honda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Subaru, just Toyota. There's there's a lot of them. And uh, so you got to – if you had an accident in the last three to four years, I did talk to Kevin at I-17 Collision. He's one of our bumper-to-bumper shops and body shops. And – I asked him, Kevin, how how do you put your customers in in the comfort zone, or, or what do you do? It would uh, what happens? I said, would it be unreasonable for your customer to call and say, Kevin, I see all this stuff. I'm just uncomfortable. I trust you. Can I have a copy of the receipt? Can I get a written statement? He said, absolutely. He would encourage you to call your body shop and ask them. You had the car repaired. What assurance can you give me that this was an original equipment? factory manufactured airbag can i get a copy of the receipt and a good shop can provide that for you we can track that down where we paid for it what what connects it to your car and and that's not a big deal it's it's done relatively quickly yeah it Uh, might you know depending i mean we box our stuff up after you know we 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 have a rotation of our right. of our paperwork inventory, if you will. I just so, make my vendors do it, so I don't have. To. Well, that so too, here's or, here's the PO, and go tell me what I bought. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We we log all that stuff, so that's not unreasonable. And, and check your title, though. If you had a if you bought a used car that um, that uh, you know doesn't look right, or maybe has a salvage title or a restore title, maybe take a look at it and see. Um, that might be another way. Now. Dave, you taught. We said, "What would an airbag inspection cost?" Man, it could be an I hour. hate to. I mean, to, the, the easiest ones are the steering wheel airbag. Take that on and off, and just look. I don't even know necessarily how you would know if it was counterfeit. I'd hate to hate to even know. Well, I hate. To, well, I guess I'd hate to say, "Oh yeah, your airbag's good," and then you go pull out and get hit, and then you get a shotgun blast to the face. I'm gonna go home and buy one off eBay. I'll spend the eighty bucks, and I'll see what kind of logo and emblem it has on it. If they're still even available, or they've all been, they've all been. Uh, brought in well yeah it, it's just a, it's a t- you just don't know it's it's something that uh, and that's why we talk about having a good relationship with the shop sticking with them using reputable people yeah not not cheap isn't always inexpensive especially when you're looking at these bad airbags <laughs> so when we come back we are going to be talking about the good guys car show we've got betsy out there and then we've got pat matt and jose And we're taking calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. My pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. 
Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we are here to help you with your car. And it's that time of year. It's nice out, clear skies. I think we're going to be 82 degrees today. You can't beat that. And this time of year, always bring the Good Guys Car Show. Speaking of hot rod Lincolns, <laughs> we've got uh, Betsy from the Good Guys Car Show joining us. Betsy, you there? I am here. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this beautiful weather that we're having has got to be uh, attractive for the hot rodders and the show car people that are getting geared up for this Good Guys Spring Nationals coming up next weekend out at Westworld, right? I think it is very attractive. It's hard to beat the weather in your neck of the woods this time of year. Yeah. Well, last year was my first time going out to the Good Guys Car Show, and it was amazing. And I, you know, I, I left the show here, and I drove straight out there, picked my son up, drove straight out there. And, I mean, we didn't have time to see everything, you know. But I found myself, I know, you know, I found yeah. myself stuck uh, watching the uh, the motocross or the autocross. I guess. Autocross, yeah. Mm-hmm. Betsy, yeah, so the what? autocross is hugely popular for us, and. You know, it's, we do it at, at the majority of our events on the schedule, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's a great thing for the participants to be involved in. It's fun for the spectators to watch. It's a great, great feature that we have at our events. Now, you were telling me, uh, we were talking before the show, that you're doing a little different this year. There's some prize money. Uh, you know, there's uh, $3,000 cash. There's a $7,000 custom snap-on toolbox that will be given to the winner. And you said they're, they're, they may race at other autocrosses, something like that. Right. We've actually put together um, an autocross shootout finals. And so the autocross shootout will take one participant um, the fastest speed overall at the event from any class. And at the final event in Scottsdale in November, we'll do a, a, a shootout. And the winner um, from each of these events will travel to Scottsdale, will compete in the autocross finals, and that winner, as you just said, will get $3,000 cash, a custom toolbox from Snap-on, some tires from BF Goodrich, who is the sponsor of that shootout finals. And it's a great, great kind of fun feature that we've added to the autocross, give it a little bit of excitement, give it a little bit of flash, and make it really a fun, fun competition for those guys who are entered. And there are guys that come to many of our events throughout the season, and they can all compete um, to be the finalists from whichever show. The only show that's not included in the finals is the third fall Del Mar Nationals, which actually falls the week after Scottsdale. So, okay. But it'll be a great field, I'm sure, to watch. Now, I, I like the autocross, Betsy, but what about the low and slow guys, like I like to say, the, you know, the low rider, the, the, the old street rod custom that's not in autocross? There's tons of that stuff out there to look at. I was amazed at all. I mean cool cars and i mean we're talking the age groups out there i mean there's kids there's all kinds of stuff for the kids to do but what i thought was cool is the enthusiast i mean you had guys i mean this is a bit of an exaggeration you had guys out there on walkers with their tricked out mm -hmm. old buick and then you got the young you know the young hipsters with their you know the 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 72 chevy truck that's all tricked out with modern equipment it's just it's a full gamut of of those cars right it is, and that's really one of the best parts of our events is that this hobby and industry is full of people who love these cars, and everybody is kind of passionate about their own car that they like, and the kind of maybe they're into customs or maybe they're into the true hot rod, the 32 Ford, but the attraction is that everybody who comes to our events predominantly are car guys, and so it's a great gathering of these amazing cars. There'll be about 2,500 cars on display next weekend. And they come from all over the country to participate in this show. And, but you'll see the spectators um, enjoying the cars. And, and you're right. They like the 72 trucks and they like the 48 lead sled customs and, and everything in between. And that's the beauty of these events is it attracts anybody who's into these kind of cars. Now, for those listening, this is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday next weekend. So that's March 8th, 9th, and 10th uh, is right. event details. Well, Betsy, right. thanks, for, thanks for spending some time with us this morning. We're looking forward to seeing you out there next week. And remember, everybody, this is a family event, kids, all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, I went out there and spent a lot of time. It, there's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of fun activities, face paint, and all kinds of stuff. I was going to so. do the autocross until I found out my uh, Honda Element did not uh, did not fit the criteria. 
Right. So, all right, Dave, we got a, a bunch of people with some questions that we need to answer. Who do we want next? Let's go first? with Pat in Chandler on a 2013 Buick LaCrosse. Go ahead, Pat. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, Dave and Matt. I listen to your show all the time. I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I was in a little minor uh, fender bender, a little bit more than minor. It's going to need some body shop repair. I booked your guys at Phoenix Body Shop. They are awesome. I just want to tell you that. Because they tell me the insurance people, they don't let you know that you have to have one of their estimates before you go to a body shop. Because if you don't, then you have to wait three or four more days. And if you use their own approved shops, insurance approved shops, they can use any aftermarket parts they feel like. Well, yeah, I mean, th- thanks for the thanks for the call, Pat. And that's um, that that's. I don't want to say there's some truth to that. On a 2013, you're going to get all original. You're parts. going to get new stuff. The aftermarket's not there yet, for sure. And even if it was there, it's such a new car. But, but uh, you know, that's that's one thing. Your insurance company is not going to buy you necessarily original equipment parts after that car is about three years old. It's not going to happen. So we we talked about this. Our Kevin from I-17. We've got first class auto body. Dave Lingram as well. Um, you know, we've talked about what kind of used parts are okay. Fenders. I'd rather have a used fender off a brand new, off a two-year-old Toyota than a brand new aftermarket one. So, mm. so it, yeah, the the body shop world can be a little it, because there's the third party. You know, it's not just you and the body shop. It's now the insurance company. So that sometimes get cumbersome and takes time and. And there's original estimates, then you see more damage. So the body... Well, she hit on a good thing, a good topic that we should bring up. Now, the insurance company is going to give you a list of uh, approved uh, body shops that you can go to. And you can actually go anywhere you want. You don't necessarily have to go to, hey, they're going to say, hey, you should go here, here, and here. You know what? If you're looking for a good body shop, bumper to bumper radiocom you don't have to go where they're sending you because that body shop is is networked with them. So they've kind of worked out as negotiated a special price and a special deal. And, and that's not always bad though. Not, always, not bad. always bad. That's, you know. But it may not be the body shop that you want to go to. So do your homework, pick the body shop that you want. Don't feel like you're forced to take the one they're giving you. Yeah, it's it it's truly is it's your choice and you can go over wherever you want to get the car fixed. So Ask questions, get a relationship, stop in. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago. You have either had an accident at some point or you're going to have an accident. It's, it's inevitable, right? Whether it's going to be a fender bender or something like that. So, And you want to get the car fixed, right? You don't have problems down the road because anyone cut corners. So you, we, we never really got to talking about degrees of quality. But when it comes to auto body, you, know, you want it done right so it doesn't cause you issues down the road. So when we come back, we've got Matt, Jose, and Peter. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and we are here to help you with your car. Every Saturday from 11 to noon, right here on 92.3. We've got Matt, Jose, and Peter, and then we've got a couple open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. Do I need to get my taser out and light you up a little bit? Come on, Dave. Am I falling asleep? <laughs> I went mountain biking at about 5 o'clock this morning, so I think I, it's, it's catching up with me. I got up and rolled over at <laughs> 5 o'clock this morning. So. Anyway, well, up first this segment, let's go with Matt in Phoenix on a oily question. Go ahead, Matt. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. How you doing today? You're right. It is a beautiful day out there, and thank you so much for the chat about the airbags. That's uh, some really great information. I'm sure it's helping a lot of consumers out there. For sure. And, uh, you know, uh, you know. Every time I hear airbags, it reminds me a little bit of a trivia question. I hope you don't mind, but uh, do you guys happen to know what Ford model in the '70s was scheduled to have airbags, but what? they cut it because they thought it'd be too expensive for consumers? No, but I'm going to get on Google. Did you say a Ford model? Yeah, it was a Ford model in the '70s. Not only was it supposed to have an airbag, but it was also supposed to have a bladder in its gas tank. And they mm. cut both of those features out because they were just too darn expensive, or what they thought were too expensive for consumers raising the price of the car. Yeah, back then, I haven't got the slightest idea, but, you know, if anybody's listening that knows, feel maybe, free to call in. we've got a retired Ford engineer, I mean, all the proving yeah, yeah. grounds well, and stuff. I can let you know, it's pretty simple. You're going to get a kick out of this. All right. It was, it was the Ford Pinto. 
The Ford Pinto. They thought about the bladder and the gas tank. I should have done that, I huh? No afterthought on that one. They they knew going in that thing was going to be a problem. <laughs> I, so, I love the the personalized plate for the Ford Pinto that says "Baboom." <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's uh, you have an oil leak question? I hope it's not on a Pinto because I can't help yeah, you so if it is. I'm an experienced off roader and I've been uh, doing or uh, driving Nissans for about 20 years now, but uh, their market's dried up quite a bit with the economy, so it's hard to get parts. So I'm switching over to Jeep. Not very familiar with Jeeps. I'm just starting to get more accustomed to them and looking to build one up. But every Jeep that I'm looking at out there from about 97 to 2001 kind of range Cherokees, they all seem to have some sort of fluid leaks underneath. And I just don't know if this is a chronic problem with the Jeeps, that they all seem to be leaking these fluids, or there's something else going on perhaps that I'm just not aware of maybe. No, I mean, that's actually a pretty good, I mean, that's a pretty good vehicle. It's a, it's the 4-liter straight six. It's been around forever. They are notorious valve cover leakers and notorious rear main seal leakers. And for whatever reason, Chrysler never went to the one-piece rear main seal on that block. So uh, rear main seal is a regular. The transmission that's in there is an Asian Warner transmission. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. But I don't I don't see it as a leaker where you're going to be chasing leaks forever. I mean, it is a Jeep. It's going to be a valve cover leak. It's going to be a rear main seal leak. Well, in some of the earlier 4 liters, there was tons of, of uh, or it was the 258 before they really called the 4 right. liter. There was valve cover updates. You couldn't get really a valve cover gasket. It was part of the valve cover. They were they, they were crummy back in that day. They were plastic. But the thing that people also need to remember, whether it's a Jeep or a Nissan, a, uh, a Acura, Audi, I don't care, you name it, fixing the oil leak... That's fixing the symptom. Sometimes that's just from a dry, hardened rubber gasket or, or, or failed part or something. But you can't forget the PCV system. PCV is positive crankcase ventilation. You can't have crankcase pressure. We use the engine to suck the pressure out of the out of the out of the crankcase and take the fumes and reburn that those oil vapors and stuff. But if that system isn't working right, that crankcase is going to build pressure and it's going to blow out the seal. So PCV valves are cheap, but is there a quick way to check it? Can you look to see if there's there's air coming out of the well, oil should, cap when you take it off? Well, yeah, if you pull the oil cap and, it just blah, 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 and there's, you can feel air pressure coming out, it's it, the PCV is probably not working. But now they, you know, on late model cars, it's just not this uh, $1.98 PCV valve. Sometimes they call them a crankcase, uh, you know, they have a flame trap or they have this big plastic, it's even a plastic housing sometimes f- stuffed with... Uh, uh, a steel wool type of thing, like a mm-hmm. mesh, a metal wad of stuff in there, and that's the filter. So, it's not always an easy check, but that's something that you need to make sure is working when you do have your oil leaks fixed. So, good luck hunting for the for your your future rock crawler and off roader, Matt. And uh, well, let's go hey. with Peter in Phoenix on a 2000 Toyota Tundra. Go ahead, Peter. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning, fellas. I, I have a, a, a question here of maybe, you know, buyer beware, consumer beware. I had the uh, Toyota Tundra. I uh, had a sensor go off, and I felt that the timing belt broke. So uh, the boss said, you know, not another weekend of fixing the car. Why don't you call the dealership, have them fix it? So I call Toyota, said, hey, how much would it cost to replace the timing belt? 517 Have it towed in. I'm there with the truck. They said, "Oh, by the way, since you're here, you should probably replace the water pump. That's going to cost you another three fifty. You're up to eight fifty nine hundred. Call it a thousand. They said, "We'll do an investigation. We'll make sure it's broke and see if we can fix it." Call me the next day. Said, "Oh, we have bad news. There's no compression in the cylinder. You're going to have to replace the engine." I said, "Fellows, what what are we looking at here?" And they said six thousand dollars. We went from five hundred to a thousand. Now we're at six thousand. Did you? Um, did you? Did they say the timing belt was broken, or was it not? The broken? timing belt was broken, and they said the mechanic reported. You know, you're dealing with the service rep, right? So they call and said, "Hey, I got bad news for you. There's no compression in any of the cylinders." I said that I find that hard to believe. It cranks over. There's no noise. I've, I've replaced timing belts, but this time I said. You know what? I'll have the dealership fix it. It's, it's not unreasonable. I started, remember, at five seventeen. So now they're telling me the engine shot. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And they're like, "No, it's you know we can replace it with a used engine. It's only going to cost you six thousand. And oh, by the way, is this your only vehicle? I was like, "No, it's not my only vehicle." And so I said, "Don't do anything. I'll have it hauled out of there." So I did. 
Uh, I have a friend that's a mechanic, and uh, he said, you know what, I'll fix it. Right. He you know, goes, th- this, is, go- this is not an, uh, an unusual story, and I hear a lot of things, you know, in here. Um, and, you know, the buyer beware, the consumer beware, but it's the consumer's got to stand in the, in the mirror sometimes, and I don't want to beat you up and warn yourself, because you called and asked for how much for a timing, timing belt, and we really didn't even know if that was the problem. You you sound very mechanically inclined and probably had a had a good good sense that that's what it was. But then I'm a little troubled that the dealer. There's a lot of things that they said. Oh, five ninety nine. That's the classic low ball. Get you in the door. They know darn well that you should replace the water pump. Yeah. They know darn well you should replace the tensioner. So that's lead them in with a low price. That's why phone. I mean, you can get phone me, pricing I'm get fired is not, up now <laughs> because <laughs> phone pricing is not worthwhile. It, it doesn't work for you. And um, and. <sighs> They're the experts. They're the dealer, right? Right. I mean, should, they're the best. Sh- and shouldn't they know that that was a valve crasher if it was? And, and when I say valve crasher, that's what we call an interference engine. The valves and the pistons and the crankshaft, everything is in time and synchronized with that belt. And when the belt breaks, the valves stop moving, the pistons continue moving, and you have a collision inside the engine. You don't hear that. You don't know it after the fact. So cranking over the engine doesn't... Um, you know, isn't isn't going to tell you much other than the time belt's broken, but so it's not unreasonable. I just don't like the tactic or the way you know the approach. I don't want to call it tactic, right? Would right. Applied, but the and, approach. But I think it. that's a problem where we go in and we say we want this, we want a timing belt, we want this. You know, that's where as a consumer, you know, and, and this gentleman was a pretty handy do-it-yourselfer, so he knows a lot of what he's looking for. But if as you're a consumer, you may talk to somebody who knows a lot of what they're, you know, what they're doing, and they may say, yeah, just get a price on a timing belt. That's where you have to let the let the technician be the technician if you just want to take it in, say, my car, needs it's broken, tow it in. They, they tell me what's wrong with it. That way, you know, see, so you steer the whole relationship toward a timing belt. Now, if somebody had an engine that wasn't running and they brought it to me, I'd say, well, the timing belt broke. This is an interference motor, so we we may be able to put the timing belt in there, but the engine itself may have further issues. So I think the relationship started wrong. Yeah, and there's some testing that we can do. with the, We can do a leak down test where we put this, each cylinder in top dead center. We don't even really have to do it on each one necessarily. Maybe you'll find the one, but put it on top dead center. Make sure the valves are closed. Pressurize the cylinder. There should be very, very little leakage. But sometimes to do that on that V6... That, Take quite a, a bit of time. That's huh? a lot. So in some cases, it's not a bad idea if the conversation went, uh, hey, Peter, this may, you know, these usually bend the valves. But, you know, if you broke it idle or starting, maybe you got lucky and it didn't. Let's pull this thing apart. We're going to put a belt on it and see if it runs. If it doesn't run, you're going to need a, probably need an engine or a valve job or something like that. If it does run, then we're going to want to pull that belt back off and finish doing the job the right way. Fixing the heads or the whatever. Prob- you know, when people call on price shop, I tell them all the time, I'd rather tell you a little higher and lose the job or lose lose the, the opportunity to have you as a customer than lowball you in with some fantasy price and then change the story and then have you angry. <laughs> You know, because why it, it are you just... red, man? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the call. You got Matt all fired up. So we're going to go with Jose in Phoenix on a 2005 Neon. Go ahead, Jose. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes. Hi, guys. How are you? I commend you. You have a fantastic show, keeping the consumers informed uh, all the way through and through. Uh, so that's a very wonderful thing. Um, I have a little problem. I took my car to Bill Luke and. Uh, thinking, well, you know, like you said, they're the experts. I had a leak underneath on the uh, passenger side of the engine. It looks like it's water mixed with some kind of fluid. Um, it doesn't look quite oily. It's it's kind of yellowish. Um, and I thought at first it might be like uh, engine coolant, but um, when I took it over to them, uh, they tell me that it's a, an AC hose. And something would seem kind of odd because I've never had any AC problems at all. Um, so they tell me that I need some AC maintenance and all this other stuff. They, it seemed like they were steering things in a complete different direction from what I was thinking, but I didn't say anything. So a thousand dollars later, um, I take the car back home. I uh, dealt with a couple guys there. The, the mechanic uh, took me into the uh, their tech took me into the uh, shop there showed me underneath the car, but then he said he couldn't figure out 
Uh, he thought that that was where the leak was coming from, but he couldn't figure it out. So I thought, well, I hope the leak got taken care of because I just paid about $1,000. So we leave from there, uh, and as I'm on my way out, uh, the other guy, the, the guy that does the servicing. Uh, hey, hey Jose, in the interest of time, I, I just – we chatted for a second because you were on hold for a long time during the break. So I want to I want to cut to the chase a little bit here. So you had the AC work done, and then some time elapsed, not a very much time, and you still have the same leak. And you went back, right? And then the shop said, "Oh, we you have to pay to have it rechecked again." Is that is, that's that's why I understood? Is that correct? Yes, I have to get it rechecked, okay. and and they're saying that I would have to uh, pay again. And this time they threw in the timing belt. Which is like five hundred and seventy-six more dollars. Okay, well, here a couple things go there. Just in the future, for anybody that wants to call in, let's let's try to leave the names out of it, unless you have something really positive to say about somebody. We don't want to, you know. It's like these reviews out there online. You know, they're we one-sided. They're right? one-sided, so we don't want to we don't want to be beating up on somebody that doesn't doesn't deserve it. Um, so, a couple things there. The air conditioning can leak. You're, it's going to leak gas or it could leak oil, depending on the system, where in the system that leaks. And we put dye in those, so they, so they uh, put dye in them so that we can see that. But that dye is also green, and that will drip out and look like coolant. There's a number of different things. And this is a good topic, but I think we'll pick it up when we come back. So yeah. when we come back, we've got a couple, co- couple of uh, lines in, uh, open. Uh, we've got, uh, looks like, R- Rachel and John. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio, here with Dave Riccio, which is me, and Matt Allen, and we are taking your calls, helping you with your car. We've got Rachel, Nick, and John, and if we don't get to you during the show, we stay afterwards to get to all these calls. So So just just going back on that phone call we just finished with, I think, Jose, that if you go back to the dealer, uh, the dealership that you're working with, ask them to show you the repair that was already done. And then ask them to show you the repair that needs to be done, and see if. Well, that, that's the problem, though, Dave. They don't know what the repair is. Jose had the car fix, or thought he had the car fix. I have a leak, mm-hmm. and that's the, another problem: leaks, noises. Those are very subjective at times. So I have a leak, and they say this is going to fix your leak. He pays. Now he has the same leak, and now they want to charge him again to recheck that same leak that they allegedly fixed. Mm. They are, in my book, they are obligated. I think, in this case, to reinspect your car and let you know, A, that they have to reinspect it, first of all, to make sure what they fixed isn't leaking again. Absolutely. And then, since it's the same thing or the same symptom for you, probably something different, but the same symptom, there's something on the ground is all we know, they need to do that for you. That's what this relationship is about. Yeah, and if you and, and that's what it comes down to is relationship – and if you can have that relationship, you don't have to have these conversations. Well, you're going to have to pay us to check it out again. No, you're just rechecking the work you already did. Make sure we were accurate. Make sure everything's good. But I, I hate that when someone has to pull their wallet out again for a repair. And sometimes it's warranted. I mean, that's we There is know. times. Yeah. There is times. But, you know, and if it's something we did, by absolutely all means, we'll take care of it. If it's something we didn't, well, then there will be a, and we're be gonna a show charge. You, and we're going to show you that. We're yeah, and do. how and why they're different. So um, I, I, would, I would keep working with them until you get it. Get it resolved. So, anyway, let's go with Rachel in Phoenix on a 2004 Cadillac. Go ahead, Rachel. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, yes. Um, my BTS has a um, double wipe that keeps saying service stability system. And when it started happening about four years ago, I took it to the dealership, and they said that it was uh, normal. It was nothing to worry about. It was one of the, the tire uh, air pressure things, but I've had all my tires replaced since then, and everything, and it still happens. Is there any other light on that says sir, other than the one that says service service stability control? No. And sometimes when I'm driving down the freeway and I'll have it in um, cruise control, it'll pick out a cruise control and apply the brakes. Well, okay, what's happening there? And and I don't know the Cadillac model for sure, but Dave, did you send out an announcement on how people can push my buttons today? <laughs> <laughs> the dealership said, oh, don't worry don't about worry it. It's about probably it. just one of those silly tire things. Right. Why did the government – well, the government does a lot of dumb things too. But why did they mandate to put these on the car? <laughs> well, 
Because of problems. Why did the manufacturer spend millions of dollars R and D in? People were dying. Yeah. So oh, don't worry about it. God, it's just another thing. That warning lights are warning lights. I mean, you, you, you need to pay attention to them. And because a light comes on, people will tell you, ah, don't worry about it or just blow it off. There's a reason that light came on, and there's an answer to why that light came on. So I get that a lot with the, the gas cap one. People got a light on. The shop may scan it, and it's an evap code. It's probably just a gas cap thing. Don't worry about it, you know? So dumb. There, there's last, last show I said there's 250 different reasons why that check engine light can come on. It, Maybe maybe there's 300. I don't know. But it doesn't differentiate. It doesn't discriminate. It just comes on. And there's a reason it came on, and we need to address it so that we know when there is a real problem that, you know, the thing's not just crying wolf. Well, Rachel, you, do, you should have it fixed. And what that stability control system is, it c- helps you drive the car in a, in a panic situation, maybe on a slippery road in ice, or you have to swerve and it just happens to be wet and you stomp on the brakes. It, the car is relying on all kinds of information, steering angle input, wheel speed sensor. There's a yaw sensor, and that's not the Texas yaw. It's the <laughs> yaw <laughs> the other way. <laughs> and, and based on all that input, if this car is sliding, the car, with the exception of the steering, will take control of that vehicle. It may accelerate the car. It may apply the brake to one wheel. It's gonna. There's a strategy computed into that program that is gonna help you recover control of that car. It's absolutely important. For sure. Well, good question. Let's go with Gina in Scottsdale on a '91 Toyota. Go ahead, Gina. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Um, hi, Matt. Hi, Dave. Hey. I had a engine light come on in my truck. Um, checked everything. Uh, parked it. The radiator cap blew. So we replaced that. Everything looked good. Now my AC compressor seems to have gone out. So with it being a 91, no one seems to be able to tell me, with the AC compressor going out, I get that. But that engine light, I cannot find a place that can tell me what this engine light means. Can you guys uh, steer me in the right direction? Gina, today is your lucky day. (laughs) (laughs) Yay. Uh, Yes, absolutely. First, bumper-to-bumperradio.com is a good resource. But Air Park Auto Service in the Air Park, Nadine Grobmeyer, she uh, owns that shop. I think it's you know there's a handful of female owned shops in the valley and some people make a big deal out of that it's 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 neat she runs the program over there but that would be a good resource they're in the air park they've been there a long time great shop they can fix anything that you need to have fixed on that car so the air conditioning compressor going out could have made, you, know, you could have created an overheating issue at the time. I don't know what the radiator cap necessarily if had to do that. the two are related or not. Yeah, but there are a couple of things you said. Every, no, we checked everything was okay. I don't really know what that means, and nobody, because I don't know who that is. Clearly, you haven't been to Air Park Auto Service. <laughs> right. So uh, I, I, we get a lot of these phone calls, and people are saying, you know, uh, they said, don't worry about it, not a big deal, or we can't figure it out. I, I don't think there's anything on the car that we can't figure out. You ever run into one, Matt? Yeah, got one in the shop right now. But uh, you know, we won't talk about his problems well, on air. But <laughs> but no, I mean, the, 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 there's a difference between I can't figure it out or I don't want to figure it out or I can't figure this out. But I'm not going to lose, and I'm going to figure this thing out. And you know, at some point, I've got this Audi at the shop that's just you know, it's like the bus is parked on top of us. Um, I'm not going to I want you know it's not like we're charging the customer at this point this is more of a an this ego is a thing, pride or, thing right or we want to prove to ourselves that we can fix it so we know for the next time it won't take 13 hours of diagnosis that some people do for free allegedly <laughs> right so well um if we didn't get to you here on air we're going to get to you after the show for sure Glad you could share your Saturday with us. We hope we gave you a little information that will lower your anxieties when it comes to auto repair. If you've got a relationship with a shop, stick with them. If you want a relationship with a great shop, bumper2bumperradio.com. And if you're there, be sure to like us on Facebook. Thanks, Peter, for putting on a great show. I'm Dave Riccio, the automotive therapist, and he is Matt Allen, the KTR car guy who's very opinionated today. I think it was opinion day here at uh, Bumper to Bumper Radio. So we'll be back next weekend, and see you then.